Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem 4 from Leak Code Contest 73 entitled Domino and Tromino Tiling. The problem states we have two types of tiles, a 2x1 domino shape and an L tromino shape. These shapes may be rotated. Given n, how many ways are there to tile a 2 by n board? Return your answer modulo 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. And note that in a tiling, every square must be covered by a tile. Two tilings are different if and only if there are two four directionally adjacent cells on the board, such that exactly one of the tilings has both squares occupied by a tile. So all this basically means is that every uh, tile in your 2 by n board has to be covered, and it can be only covered uh, by either a domino or a tromino tile, not uh, two or more tiles. And note that n uh, will be in the range 1 to 1000. So we have our domino and tromino tiles in the top right hand corner and we also have the solution to the first uh, three ends, one, two, and three. So we can see here that uh, clearly when n is one and we have a two by one board, we're only gonna have one solution and that's just the domino tile. Uh, for n equal to two, meaning that we have a two by two board, we have two solutions. So that's two uh, vertical uh, dominoes and two horizontal dominoes. No, we can't use a tromino because that would just leave an empty space here and we don't have a tile that will uh, fit that empty space. And uh, n equals 3 is where things get interesting. So here our solution is 5 uh, and we and that's driven by uh, three combinations of dominoes and two combinations of trominals. And what we can notice here is uh, the beginning of our dynamic programming solution. So let's uh, define a vector uh, that we're going to call dp, and so dp1 is just going to store our result for when n equals 1, uh, dp2 our result for n equals 2, and so on and so forth, and then we're going to also uh, take our domino and we're going to call it a and we're going to take these two horizontal uh, dominoes and call it b and what we can notice is that uh, for n equals three um, it's equal to basically dp2 which is this plus a domino so that will give you these two uh, boards and then dp1 uh, which is just this domino plus our b so these two horizontal ones that's what this is here one uh, vertical and two horizontal and then we have an additional two uh, boards uh, created by a combination of trominoes um, and so if we take a look at dp4 when n is equal to 4 and, and note we're going to call these two boards from uh, dp3 equal to c we have a similar pattern so our answer is going to be equal to 11 and that's driven by dp3 plus a so that's basically taking these five boards and appending a domino to each one which is going to give us five boards and then we're going to take dp2 and we are going to add uh, b to it and that's going to give us an additional two boards because two, uh, modifying two boards just gives us two boards. And then for uh, DP1, we know we can add these additional two uh, boards from MP3 to just a single domino. Uh, and that is going to give us another two. So we're going to end up with five plus two plus two. And then here we have our uh, newly created boards that aren't sort of a combination of any of our previous states. Um, and if we continue to do this, we're going to notice that for everything that's greater uh, than basically uh, you know, two states before it, we're always going to be adding uh, two of these or two of these or whatever it is for uh, our current n. So dp5, we're going to have this same sort of pattern. And at the end, we're going to have these two new boards, which aren't a combination of any of our previous states. And so uh, using this, we can create a recursive, uh, a sort of recursive formula that basically it's similar to a Fibonacci sequence that relies on our previous states to calculate our current state. Uh, so let's remove some of this. So the first thing we want to do is change our 4, 3, 2, and 1 to n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and uh, n minus 3. Um, then from there, we want to change our a and b to just multiply by 1 and our c uh, to multiply by 2. And note that this right now just represents, you know, for n equal to 4, we only have uh, n minus 3 here. But when n is much greater, we're going to have the sum of all of our n's from 0 to n minus 3. So we have n minus 1 here, n minus 2, and n minus 3. And this is multiplied by 2. So let's move this to the center of the screen. Uh, we can simplify this by dropping uh, the multiplications by 1 and moving the 2 outside the summation. Um, 
And once we do this, we can do a little bit of algebra to simplify our formula. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out two n minus threes from the top or the end of this uh, summation, and that'll give us this. Then we can move our n minus two over to uh, swap sort of this n minus two with this n minus three. And what we'll notice here as is this, the remainder of this equation is just equal to uh, dp n minus one. So if we were to you know put n minus one in here, n minus one would go to n minus two, n minus two would go to n minus three, and n minus three here would go to n minus four. So we can replace this term here with just dp n minus one. And then the only thing to do is just to combine these two uh, dp n minus ones, and we end up with the formula two times uh, dp n minus one plus dp n minus three. And all we have to do is implement a linear solution that calculates all of these in a vector and uh, return uh, and calculate that up to n. So let's take a look at our code. So here we have a simple function. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, declare a local uh, constant mod, which is equal to our uh, modulus divisor. Uh, and then we have our vectors. We're going to have it. Um, uh, we're going to declare it for longs and not ints because we are not sure if int is going to be large enough uh, when we're doing this multiplication and addition. And we're going to initialize our vector initially to be equal to the first few values. You know, the zero index doesn't matter, and we can recall that uh, one, two, and five were the initial solutions to n equals one, n equals two, and n equals three. And then we need to resize our vector so that. Uh, uh, we, we will be able to calculate up to n. Technically, you could resize this to n, but the, it won't affect the complexity. And then we're just going to loop from uh, i equals 4, which is 1 greater than we initialized our uh, vector to using braced, initial, braced initialization. And then up till n, we're going to perform our calculation, which is just 2 times n minus 1, or in this case, our iterator is i, plus uh, dp i minus 3. And uh, we have to make sure we are taking the modulus of this at each step so that we don't uh, overflow our integer or our, our, our long value. And at the end, we just return uh, dp of n. And of course, this solution is going to be uh, linear because we only have uh, one loop. So it'll be linear in the uh, size of our input. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.